In this episode, let's explore as to how to make use of the data present in the map data structure. In the previous episode, you have understood as to how to fill the data into the map data structure. And in this episode, we have to understand how to make use of the data and solve the most commonly asked programming placement interview questions. So let's get started. Using this logic, we had been successful in placing this data onto the map data structure like this. In fact, that was what you had understood in my previous episode. In this episode, what we are supposed to understand is to how to make use of this data that is present in the map data structure. But before that, let me caution my viewers that just in case you have not watched the previous episode on maps or the episode prior to that on the for each loop, then I would recommend you to stop watching this video immediately, get back, watch the previous two episodes and then come back to continue ahead watching this. And for those who have been watching my videos regularly, let's get started and understand as to how we can actually make use of this data to solve the commonly asked programming questions. This is my map data structure and the data inside the map would be present as the key value pairs. This is all the data. In fact, I would call my map as the hash map. Well, in this episode, I may not be able to discuss about the different kinds of map. Maybe moving forward, I would discuss about it. But in this episode, what I can certainly do is to tell you as to how I can access the key present in the map and the value present in the map. So let's understand that. Java provides us with the inbuilt methods in order to access the key and to access the value. And if you'll ask me, what is that inbuilt method? Well, get key is the inbuilt method using which I can access the key present in the map data structure and get value is the inbuilt method using which I can access the value present in the map data structure. But I cannot be using the inbuilt methods this way. The proper syntax of using these inbuilt methods is data dot get key. That is going to give me the access to the key and not just that to access the value as well. It has to be data dot get value. Also, if you would like to print it, then you just have to enclose it within the respective print statements. Well, these two lines of code can certainly print the data, but they would be able to print only the data present in the first row. Now, how do we print the remaining data present in the map data structure? Let me tell you. If I'll have to print all the data present in this map data structure, then all that I have to do is to place these two print statements within a loop. And which loop should I use? Should I make use of the for loop or the while loop or the do while loop? Well, I would not be making use of any of these traditional loops. Rather, what I would be making use of is the for each loop and how to make use of it. You know the syntax. This is how the for each loop looks. There would be a colon in the for each loop and to the right side of the colon, I have to give either the name of the array or the name of the collection. And in this case, this is my collection. Yes, this map happens to be my collection and the name of the collection happens to be HMAP. So to the right of the colon, I am going to give HMAP. And to the left of the colon, I have always written there as data. Those who have watched the previous episode know that that is the way we have used the for each loop and not just that to the left of the data what we have to provide is the data type of that data well what is the data type of the data let me explain the data type of the data you would get to know by carefully watching the map if you would notice my data is composed of the key value pair and not just that the key happens to be characters and the value happens to be integers. So if you'll ask me what is the data type of my data, then I would say that the data type happens to be a combination of characters and integer. That is what is the data type of my data. But how do I specify it in the for each loop? Well, there is a syntax for it wherein I have to say that the data type of my data is map dot entry of character comma integer. This is how I specify the data type of my data. 
I know for beginners, it might seem to be a very lengthy data type of the data, but moving forward, certainly you would get accustomed to writing such syntax. Nevertheless, would this work? That we would get to know only when I write the complete program. So let's go ahead and write the complete program. I would begin by creating a string object with Aradhya as the data. Next, I would make use of the two care array method and extract the data from the object and place it inside the array. Why? Not just that, I would also compute the size of the array. After which, I would be making use of the logic that I had conveyed to you in my previous episode. You know, the logic of my previous episode helped me in placing the data Aradhya inside the map data structure as a key value pair. And if you'll ask me what is that logic, this is the one. I'm sure you can recollect this logic. Also after this, in today's episode, I have spoken to you as to how by making use of the for each loop, I would be able to access the data present in the map and print it for you. And today's logic, this is the one. Anyway, this is the complete program. And when I'll execute, this is what we get. So through the previous episode and this episode, what you've been able to understand is that this is the logic using which I can place my data inside the map data structure as a key value pair. And this is the logic using which I can access and print the data, which is there inside the map. Anyway, though these two logics are clear to you, the larger question still remains as to what is the real use of the map data structure? What kind of problems does the map data structure helps the programmer in solving? Well, if that is the question that is bothering you, then please have a look at these questions. To find if all the characters present in the string are unique, to find all the non-repeated characters present in the string, to find the first non-repeated character present in the string. Well, while all these questions might seem to be on strings, but let me tell you that as a programmer, if and only if you know how to make use of the map data structure that you would be able to find solutions to these. And not just these, the questions like this. To find the maximum occurring character present in the string, to print the duplicate characters in the string to remove the duplicate character from the string again they may appear to be programs on strings but certainly would make use of the for each loop as well as the map data structure and that is precisely why i had deviated from strings explained to you in my previous episodes about the for each as well as the map data structure and in the upcoming episodes i would discuss the solutions to not just these frequently asked programs but many many more all that you have to do is to continue watching my videos and continue gaining knowledge